Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that super spooky intro. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did. I'm just gonna jump on into it. First things first, make sure you go and put all of your hair back now. I should have done it like right then and there, but I was trying not to look too ugly. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna start out with a Makeup Forever silicone based primer just to like fill in all my pores and everything. Um, body paint typically, you know, doesn't look as good as foundation, so I just want everything to be really smooth. Don't forget your neck and chest because we're gonna paint that too. Cleaning some of the excess primer off my brows, I'm gonna take an Elmer's glue stick. <laughs> I know this is crazy. If you have blonde eyebrows, you can totally skip this step, but I'm gonna show you guys how I completely cover my brows. Um, so the first step with this is we are basically going to go ham with this glue stick going back and forth against the grain making sure each and every single hair is covered. Now taking a spoolie and using a ton of pressure, but not too much, don't be too rough around your eye area, we're going to brush all of our eyebrow hair straight up and I mean as directly upwards as you can possibly get it. You want to get it as flat as possible um, so after you brush it with the spoolie you can even take a palette knife or um, maybe like the end of a makeup brush and just kind of like flatten the hairs and make sure that the glue is completely adhered to the skin if you guys want to speed up the drying process a little bit i recommend a super cool blow dryer just in between the steps to make it go faster I always end up having to repeat these two steps probably two to three times because of my brow thickness, but essentially you just want to make sure that literally no brow hair can escape. Once the glue is dry, I'm going to apply a super thick layer of setting powder to fill in any possible gaps that might be there from the glue and to just smooth over the texture. Next, using a super bright orange lipstick, I'm gonna take it on a brush and start to brush it upwards onto the brows, just to make sure that you don't disturb the glue underneath. But what this does is we're gonna color correct our brows so that when we put foundation on top of it, it'll be virtually invisible. All right, I don't know what the heck that was next to me in these clips, but let's just never talk about it again because your girl does not even have the option to move right now. Once you got those bad boys covered, I'm just gonna take some setting powder and saturate it as much as possible to soak up the residual moisture. Then you're gonna take basically the most full coverage foundation slash concealer that you can possibly find. The best one I have right now is the Jouer foundation. It will literally cover anything. Your brows, your secrets, your life, it's gone. But make sure you don't forget to blend those edges. Then we're gonna go ahead and set it with a little bit of powder foundation. A lot of people will actually just use plain translucent setting powder, but I personally find that this adds just a little bit more coverage. Now that I'm browless as heck, I'm going to take this brand new, beautiful Makeup Forever flash palette and I'm going to dip into the white shade. And I'm just going to begin to paint this upwards by my brows so that we don't disturb any of the makeup underneath. Then just go ahead and begin to paint the rest of your face. Don't worry about your neck because we're going to do all of that later. Once I have my face fully covered, I like to take a nice beauty sponge and just make sure everything is blended out. Then wherever I felt like I needed a little bit more fuller coverage, I went in with the Kat Von D Whiteout Concealer. One, because it's made for that and it's going to make your face look a lot smoother, but two, it's going to set a lot better than the paint around your eyes. Now to make sure everything stays where you put it, just set it with a nice white eyeshadow and you should be good. Now onto the brows. I'm taking a nice gel liner and I'm just beginning to carve out my first brow. I feel like the way that I would describe these brows is they're obviously very expressive, but 
it's like a teeny happy face and then it goes into a large frowny face if that makes sense i feel like it would just be a lot easier to watch so i'm just gonna leave a lot of footage in for you guys i will chime in and say that one brow is supposed to be higher than the other so if you do that by accident that is perfect also these are the same exact brows that i use for Coraline. i would just recommend going in with a deep navy blue rather than a deep black Now moving on to the rest of the face, I'm going to take Noir Shadow by Anastasia and carve out my little temple area first. And then I'm going to go ahead and shade my forehead area, not necessarily into like a triangle shape, but we want to make sure that our face is really going inwards. Beginning at the top of my ear, we really want this cheekbone to be super high. I'm starting to carve it out and then I'm going to go slightly in an upwards motion as I reach the edge, just like I'm doing here. Once you get those drawn and both sides are even, you're just going to start to shade downwards with the same black shadow and you're really, really going to start to create that depth. I basically started by making a long triangular shape and then just blending out the bottom. We're gonna take a small break from that area because I like to get everything kind of laid out before I really go ham with the shading. So I'm just starting to create this pointy chin by making these two little knots on the bottom, basically sides of my chin, but you just, guys, they gotta be even or you're gonna look crazy. I had such a hard time getting them even at first, but once you get the first one right, it should be smooth sailing from there. Now I'm just gonna follow the lines I created and shade the underneath part of my chin, you know, to make my face disappear. Going back to the cheekbone area with the same black shadow we are using in a fluffy brush, I'm gonna go ahead and connect the lines that we made and then I'm gonna move the black shadow inwards towards the chin. Feel free to go a little more ham than I did with the black shadow because I ended up adding a lot more later. Now, before I started to draw my buttons, I thought it would be a good idea to add a little bit of like back shading with a nice cool taupe shadow. I felt like this would just give it a little bit more depth and it totally did. I also took the time to add some deep black eyeliner into the upper and lower waterline of my eye. Now it's finally time to replace our eyes with some buttons. I do wanna say that the button technique that I'm using today is deeply inspired by Courtney Little's YB tutorial. If you have any friends that also wanna go as Coraline characters, I would most definitely check her account out. I'm gonna leave it for you in the description below. Mixing some white and black paint together from the same palette I used earlier, I created this nice gray shade. This is gonna be our base for the buttons because we're gonna add shading to this and it's gonna give it a lot more depth. And you know, by now I think you know that we're kind of all about that here. Using a small detail brush, I'm just outlining the circle with some black eyeshadow, and then I'm just blending it out a little bit to make sure I don't have any harsh lines. Next, taking the Kat Von D Dagger Eyeliner, I'm using the end points of my eyes as a guide and drawing an inner circle inside of the circle we've already created. Using the same detail brush and black shadow we used earlier, I'm starting to drag the black shadow inwards from the line that we just created. Then to complete our base shading, I'm just taking a clean fluffy brush and blending everything to make sure there's a really smooth transition. Now that you have a nice blended base, you can go on and, you know, kind of create the real button part. I'm using this NYX white liner and a nail daughter tool 
and I'm just gonna go ahead and create the dots. Since the liner I used was stark white, I decided to take some black eyeshadow and dirty these dots up a little bit. Then just go over the whole button using the same taupe shadow we used earlier. And that's when I realized my camera didn't record me drawing the threads. So what I did, I basically just lined my makeup brush up and down on my eye to make sure that my lines would be straight because if they're not, the buttons just aren't gonna look real. So you really wanna make sure everything lines up perfectly when you close your eyes. And I'm actually using a liquid lipstick to paint this. This is the shade Zero by Kat Von D. And now for the finishing touches on the eyes, I'm just going back with the tiny brush again and shading outwards with a black eyeshadow around all the threads. And this is what your finished eye should look like. Cute as a button. Moving on to the nose, I'm basically just taking black eyeshadow and drawing really long triangles to make it look like I have not only a super skinny nose, but super skinny nostrils. And while I'm at it, I'm actually going to fake having a super skinny nose. So I'm just adding a tiny bit of contour with that taupe eyeshadow I used earlier. And then I'm just going along the sides of my nose. And then to make it a tiny bit shorter, I'm just going to add a little bit of dark gray eyeshadow to the bottom. Now onto my personal favorite part. <laughs> We're going to start drawing the cracks and the first time around I used the Kat Von D dagger liner which you can see I was trying to do here but I felt like the pigment wasn't coming out like it was supposed to so I gathered that I got way too much grease paint in the brush or something and so anyways I just ended up using the gel eyeliner that I used for my brows. You can really use whatever guys just make sure it's waterproof because it's Halloween you're gonna sweat, gonna get a little crazy. You really, really just don't want these running down your face because you'll look even scarier than the other mother and I don't know anything scarier than that. Now there really isn't much of a technique to drawing the cracks. I feel like using a really small brush really helps a lot in a good moist <laughs> gel formula. I'm so sorry, but that's the only word for it. Um, I'm basically taking the brush and just making these like weird random jagged motions and if I make one that's like too thick I'll just make it into a thicker crack. It's really really hard to mess this up so don't be too hard on yourself. It's gonna look great. It's gonna be amazing. No matter what though I'm sure you're gonna scare pretty much everybody in your neighborhood including your parents and oh my god if you do please send me the video. <laughs> Also, I'm sure you guys can tell by now, but I'm not putting the cracks in the exact same spots that I did last time. I just kind of wanted to show you that um, even if you do it a little bit differently, you can still get the desired result and still get the same effect. Like for real, check out this. What is that? What is that line that I just drew? But you see, I fixed it. It's gonna be okay. Now to complete the face, I'm just taking whatever black lipstick I had on hand. I misplaced so much of the makeup that I originally used for this look because after Halloween, my studio is looking like a black hole, so I hope you guys forgive me, but I do highly recommend using a liquid to matte because it's going to last so much longer. Once you've applied your black lipstick like you normally do, just take an angled brush and essentially wing out the sides of your mouth, like kind of how you would your eyeliner. We basically just want to elongate it and make it look a little spooky. 
Now taking whichever black paint you're comfortable with, this is the Marin Water Activated Formula, the same one that I used for my skull tutorial actually, and I'm just going to completely cover the sides of my neck, leaving the middle blank. Then going back in with the same white paint that I used earlier, I'm just gonna fill in that middle section with white, and then we're gonna move on to the collarbones and the ribs, and everything's really gonna start to come together. I feel like this part's a little self-explanatory, but just make sure to fill any spots that might show your skin that might ruin the illusion. For the blending of the ribs, I'm going to take that same Morphe 35K palette using a dark taupe shadow. And you can really haphazardly apply this. We're really just going to throw black on top of it so it doesn't matter much. Just make sure to focus the black shadow more inwardly and then blend it outwards because that's going to create the depth that you're looking for. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start making these like weird vertebrae lines. They don't even have to be lines necessarily because we're gonna end up smearing them and kind of messing them up anyways, just to make them look more realistic, especially on the super white clean looking parts. Really, I'm just kind of like dabbing some brown shadow randomly here and there just to make the bones look a little bit dirtier. Then I'm just gonna take some black shadow and fill in the empty spaces that we created earlier and then dot some of the excess shadow that I had on the vertebrae to add more depth. For a final step, all you need to do is slap on this little mole here and put on your wig. Now I know for a fact you've never been more ready to entrap the souls of innocent children. Seriously though, thank you so much for the love over on Instagram on this look. If you enjoyed this tutorial and this video, please like and subscribe. I will see you next time. For you, our little doll.